meeting of the Marinwood CSD Board of Directors. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by using the web link or dial-in information printed on this agenda. Instructions on how to make a public comment during the meeting. At points in the meeting when, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the, click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. All public comments shall be addressed to the Board of Directors and limited to three minutes per speaker. The Board of Directors may choose to respond to comments or request staff to respond at the conclusion of the public comment period. Welcome, Kathleen, you're just in time. All right, <laughs> moving on to call to order and roll call of directors. Tiffany, will you do us the honors of roll calling? Hmm, I think she's frozen. I think so, either, either that or she's deep in thought. <laughs> Without blinking. <laughs> All right. You got a really well, good poker face. I, I'll say best I've ever seen. Yeah. All right. Well, then I, I can do the role if you want. Uh, awesome. We'll Please. Thank you. Uh, Board President uh, Ruggieri. Here. Uh, wait, now I got to figure out the whole alphabetical order of it. Thing. Are you back, Tiffany? Oh, good. I think so. Good. <laughs> Board President Ruggieri's here. I'll let you take it from there. Oh, excellent. I will note that. Board, uh, nope. Director Case. Here. Director Kilkenny. Here. Director Oyserman. Here. And Director Shea. I had to re remember alphabetizing. <laughs> Actually, Shea. I'm here. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, the agenda. Uh, any any comments on the agenda or amendments? None. All right. So then agenda is adopted. All right. Moving to um, item C, consent calendar. Do I have a motion to approve? A motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. Excellent. Any comments or questions from the board? Okay. Any comments or questions from the public? Yeah, one second, please. Hello. Uh, yeah, I, actually, this uh, I have a question and comment for the agenda as well as the consent calendar. So I will take them separately. Um, and I guess it was just an oversight, uh, Lisa. Apologies. Um, Thank you. Um, so, you know, every week or every month, uh, items for the agenda come up. I bring up some, other people bring up some, but for whatever reason, they never get placed in the agenda. And um, I'm wondering, you know, why that is, because, you know, these are uh, concerns brought in good faith before the board. And um, I actually think that, you know, to be a good representative, you should at least uh, give consideration uh, to some of the issues. I brought up issues such as accessibility, um, access to uh, rentals, uh, for people outside our community, um, the illegal use of alcohol in our parks, um, maintenance issues, uh, uh, especially in the, the open space areas, not directly around the community center. And, you know, these are legit concerns, but they never seem to get brought up. Um, and, uh, in fact, this last month, uh, we didn't have the park and rec commission, uh, which I'm sure Eric will have some kind of remark on that. Uh, there was no announcement. And, um, you know, if you're a public body, you have to engage the public, be public. And, you know, you, this is a democratic process. So I, I don't feel like uh, adequate attention is being uh, given to legit concerns. So that's for the agenda. As far as the consent calendar, um, I went down and looked at some of the expenses. One of the things that popped out at me was the cost for entertainment for our summer camps. And it's like a thousand bucks here. And I, I don't know what the, these entertainments are. Um, it seems like a lot of money for, you know, I, I don't know, a DJ. I, I don't, I actually don't know what the entertainments are. So I, I but I am kind of curious uh, if these expenses are deemed necessary. Um, Maybe they're good value. I, honestly, I, I don't know anything about them, but they did pop out because they're quite a bit. Also, who is doing the booking? Um, is that uh, something that is also uh, done through Bill Hansel's uh, 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 artist representation side business? Kind of like to know a little bit more how the money gets spent and whether this is a good use of taxpayer resources. So I, I don't know if you can specifically comment on those now or you want to comment on, on them later, but I'd certainly like to hear a response. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, I don't know. So uh, can, I, can I can I make a slight statement after Stephen speaks before we get into this? I would like I, I really appreciate everything you said, Stephen, and thank you for bringing these things up. When you're bringing these things up, please refrain from throwing people's names in. I don't want Bill throwing your name in to say stuff. Bill shouldn't be thrown into your statements. Anybody else in the public who comes and comments should not be using this forum to drag other people's names through. You could have just said, I, I would like to know who's booking these without throwing Bill's name in there. That was just not appropriate. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Savan. And I guess just perhaps we could address the the line item um surrounding the the entertainment. I I, I don't I don't see exactly which line item it is. Um should that be under once we do the um luke talk about that when he talks about the camps but in general everything that's billed for camp is part of the tuition that people are paying for camp and right yes of course there's definitely going to be a surplus when we look at the when we look at the revenue that comes in from camp oh, tuition. i'm happy to speak to some of the expenditures if you guys want um maybe we do it now or address any that in our report um yeah, i'm happy to address it really quickly too yeah just really quickly go ahead luke. yeah so um throughout the summer camp program not every week but throughout the summer we do uh, have we hire um a small number of different entertainers or um special presenters to come in and do special presentations to some of the different camps um yeah usually it's to the, to the whole camp program they cycle through and it's an all day situation because we have so many kids um, they can only be in you know one group at a time or a couple groups at a time uh, so the entertainers are, are there for a very long period of time and that doesn't you know racking up how much we're paying them but those will be things from uh, you know a special magic show by a uh, you know, local magician to um someone bringing in exotic reptiles that the kids get to learn about and see and hold and, and get to um you know, find out about that's like an educational situation um, we do sometimes have a dj come and the kids get to do karaoke and have a dance party uh, so those are the things we do just to mix it up usually it's 
um, once every other week uh, that we have something like this take place at the camps. And um, yeah, we, we feel that we're getting a good value for the money that we're spending um, in order to, to bring a special element to our camps and something that the kids uh, and the parents have shared a lot of feedback that they really appreciate and enjoy. So um, if there's any specific question about a, a specific expenditure for one of these entertainment groups, um, I can try to answer that, but I'd have to talk to Robin probably who actually books the entertainment and knows a little bit more about what the specifics are on that. But I can, I can find more out if anyone has a specific question. Great, thank you. Luke. The, um, the only thing I would add is these are all planned and budgeted as part of the entire summer planning and budgeting process. These are, they're incorporated into, into the planned costs. Oh, and these are just costs that we run a summer camp. This is funded. <clears throat> right, so Bill, Bill, Bill has his hand up. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you very much. I just wanted to make a mention about uh, <clears throat> item B, the agenda. That's really anything on the agenda that needs to be moved or erased for one reason or another, not complaining about what is on the agenda or isn't on the agenda. Thank you for the clarification, Bill. Um, all right, so with that, uh, let's take a vote. Um, yes, let's take them. I'm not frozen. Board President Ruggieri. Aye. Director Case. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Oyserman. Aye. And Director Shea. Aye. Thanks. Thank you. Um, moving on to item D, public comment, open time for items not on the agenda. Yeah, one second, please. Uh, yes, uh, so summer, we're in the midst of summer. Uh, some of you have taken vacations. S some are planning vacations right now. And uh, every time you want to do something special and uh, go on a vacation, you need to go through the planning process. And the planning process is we agree on where we want to go and uh, you know how much is it going to cost. Um, you know what what factors do we need to have in place and then uh, doing the things necessary to get off and have a good time with our family likewise uh, we need to do that if we want to get anywhere as a district and not instead of meeting here to uh, say hey good job guys but to really plan forward uh, for the future um, and so uh, you know I, I would hope that we would keep focus on that I do want to address a couple of comments because I always seem to get a, uh, a retort to what if I say something mildly controversial uh, first is Savan's comment that I shouldn't mention Bill uh, Hansel and I, I agree I, there's nothing personal here but he is somebody that we do a lot of business with in the district and um, I think it is a, a good education for us to know how how and where our money is being spent secondly um, uh, Bill Shea's comment that uh, I should say something that he finds agreeable uh, regarding the agenda and I think um, maybe Maybe there's a misunderstanding there because, uh, you know, quite frankly, if you're not putting stuff on the agenda, if you're not addressing things, Bill, that goes directly to your representation for this district. Um, I would hope that you would uh, take into account any comments that you get from the uh, public, not just me, and uh, make uh, appropriate adjustments to the agenda as needed. Um, you know, quite frankly, I think if you're serious and you want to contribute to this community, you'll look for ways to move forward as a whole community, um, not just simply a, a board that meets once a month and uh, says, good job, guys, time to go home. Um, so that's all I have to say. All right, thank you, Stephen. Moving on to district matters. Uh, items one and two, uh, you, Eric? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> let's uh, address the fiscal year and financial reporting for 19, for 21 22. I gave you guys a pretty detailed report. Obviously, there's some detailed financial statements in here. I'm not going to go through the entire. Uh, Report just some of the things that I do want to point out to put these in greater context. Uh, obviously, the you know profit and loss statement is you know solely looks at the, the operating revenue and, and expenditures as budgeted for the fiscal year and then performance against the original budget. Um, this is not a, a balance sheet or anything like that. This is simply a profit and loss statement. Um, looking at what the numbers were, you know, our, uh, I, I had a little note here that the ongoing public health situation does still impact the budget in this in the actuals. And in this case, it kind of had a, a reverse impact where for the past you know couple of years we've had to scale back from what was originally planned. This year we had something planned in the final approved budget uh, in May of 2021, and we had a lot of changes that occurred from that point forward that actually loosened a lot of the restrictions. So the the result was we were able to maximize, especially on the recreation side, you know, program participations that did result in higher expenditures because we're serving more kids, having more staff working, but uh, it also resulted in significantly greater revenue gains than we had uh, incurred expenditures. Um, for the fiscal year, the total operating revenue exceeded operating expenses by approximately $1.4 million on the year. Um, that's just performance for the year. Uh, there are some bullet points that talk about the impact of taxes as well as, you know, we got a nice windfall when we applied and received a pro you know, just under $340,000 in COVID relief funding that is represented here. Um, so if you take away the COVID funding, we're still over a million in the uh, black for this. Uh, again, recreation program is you know really what drove it is it far exceeded our budgeted projections that uh, when we plan for our rec programs, you know that's occurring in March of 2021. Uh, so at that point, in time, a lot changed and enabled us to serve more youths, open more programs, serve more people, uh, which obviously results in, in greater finances on both sides of the equation. Um, I do have a note here about some of the items that were booked as account payable and account receivables. You can certainly see what those are there. The other thing I wanted to explain uh, briefly is you know we book at the end of the year um, a little over $820,000 in deferred unearned revenue. What that means is we took in revenue prior to 6:30 for programs and services that are offered on 7:1 or later. So technically, we don't earn that revenue if we cancel those programs let's say we have to return that revenue so that money is deferred on the books from the year that it was actually received which would have been 21 22 to being earned in 22 23 um, and at 820,500 dollars um, you know it's a decent chunk of change that gets deferred and that's exclusive to uh, uh, recreation revenue uh, not only summer camps and programs but pool and memberships and swim lessons and everything else um, tennis classes all that um, 
and you can see what our operational budget capital expenditures were. Uh, I do have in here, it's not part of the operational budget, it's the large capital expenditure, um, but I did want to certainly include an update on spending for the maintenance facility. Uh, obviously, the district took out a 10-year loan in the amount of $650,000 um, last July. Uh, in total, we expended uh, about $1.16 million on this project during the year of those $319,000 and change uh, were taken from our available Measure A funds. Uh, the remaining $847,610 were used from our general fund. Uh, and as of the current date, we actually still have remaining about $115,000 in our Measure A fund, uh, which is we'll help them work towards the courtyard project, uh, which we'll talk about later in the meeting. Um, so kind of just you know concluding this, uh, we did have a nice strong financial performance again at June 30th. The cash balance in our district fund was approximately $7.53 million. Um, that's an increase of just over $1.6 million from the same point in time last year, June 30, 2021. Uh, to give this a little context, our total budgeted expenditures for the current fiscal year of 2023 are approximately 6.17. So we've been able to build the general fund to an amount that now exceeds the planned expenditures for the upcoming fiscal year, uh, while also completing a long overdue major capital project, establishing or contributing to our OPEB trust uh, that also has a current value of over $500,000. So in all, um, we have finished the year pretty good. Uh, I'm definitely uh, satisfied with how the financials look for this year, uh, mixing in all of those projects and even taking on some of the uh, debt that we took on to finish that project as well. So uh, any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, at the end of the financial statements, there's just some other kind of summary notes um, about some specific accounts where maybe the variance needed a little bit of explaining. Uh, so I added those in. Uh, any questions or comments, I'm happy to field them from the board. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Um, any, any questions from the board? I just want to clarify. So the 1.4 that we got is basically June's camp revenues. But then in addition to that, there's 820. Uh, thousand five hundred that is moving over for next year because of the fact of the way that we do our billing and payment received before we they can't come in through camp so it's camp earned us more than 820 it's 820 plus right sure but it's not the 1.4 million that right. we netted i mean that, right. that 1.4 is spread across the entire department and that's a result of total revenue over right. total expenditures for you know park rec fire street lights uh, right i just and everything. want to clarify so that people are understanding that okay. yeah, yeah and that's again strictly operational that doesn't take into account the uh the loan amount um you know taking on the, the added debt and it doesn't take yeah. into account the uh the building project either that's just yeah. our budgeted operational revenue versus expense oh, thank you Anything else from the board? I mean, I guess and I have a kind of a forward looking question. Do we think that next year, assuming things are going in about the same as we are now with COVID up and downs, that we should project about the same minus the 330 that we got for COVID relief about the same? Or are we thinking that we're going to grow again next year? Do we? Uh, that's a very hard question to answer, and unfortunately, with crystal ball. What I will say is, you know, obviously, when I budget, when you know the staff works on this, we budget very conservatively on the revenue side and a little bit more aggressively on the expenditure side. And we tend to usually come in under expenditures and over on revenue um, just to play it safe and make sure right. that we're not overextending what we think we're going to bring in in terms of revenue versus what we think are, are going to need to spend. So it's, uh, I would say, in our trend, I mean, we've been, you know, this is a very good year. A lot of that's buoyed by that $337,000. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at our trends over the last several years, you know, four, four plus years or so, I'd say we've been netting, you know, anywhere from, 700,000 to 1.2 million uh, okay. in additional revenue. Again, you know, I think to really properly put this into context, you have to look at, you know, we still have other liabilities, you know, yeah. and we're still going through these stages where things are going to be presented to the board. A couple months ago, we showed the big picture of our capital needs. Um, yeah. This month, right now, it's our year-end financials. Next month, uh, we'll have our latest OPEB actuarial report presented. The month after that, we're going to review our uh, pension liability. So, um, you know, all of those are still large liabilities, but that gives you the big picture of here's where the district currently stands from a financial perspective. And then we're also shooting to have, trying our darndest and working with the audit firm to see if we can get the audit done a little bit yeah. sooner in the year as well. And that'll give the board a good understanding of, okay, we've managed to grow our general fund to a point that's sustainable and secure by having as much in our general fund as we have in a given, you know, in the upcoming spending year, yeah. we're paying down these liabilities by contributing to the OPEB trust. We're still building these board designated reserves. Um, you know, where do you go with that? And that'll be a deeper conversation because there are ways to address some of these larger liabilities. Do you put more towards the OPEB trust? Do you start to look at uh, potentially establishing a similar trust to address um, pension liabilities? Uh, but again, I wouldn't even want to start having those conversations until yeah. the pieces have been presented uh, and understood and the board has a firm grasp on, on the most current data available for all of that. Then I think you start saying, okay, we're in a much more sound financial position. We should start addressing these liabilities because they don't go away. They're not red herrings. They're, they're real liabilities. So it's, uh, you can really start to make some sound. I certainly have some thoughts behind it and I will certainly make some suggestions and recommendations when we get to that point. But ultimately, you know, how the board wants to invest or address these liabilities is a decision, you know, to be authorized and approved by the board. Thank you. Of course. Thanks, Eric. No, hands up. Yes, I do. Uh, I want to go and pat somebody on the back for this uh, financial statement because when I came on board, the $1.4 million in the red was was horridly in the minus. Um, it's been a long, long time since we've seen uh, a stronger financial position that this district has had uh, in the last, oh God, you can go back 15, 20 years. Um, in the last five years, though, it has been improving each and every year. And I have to give credit where credit is due, and that's Eric and his team that works under him, Luke and Robin and Carolyn and Tiffany. I, I just, and JP. Uh, it's just, it's a great team. Everyone works well together, and I, I'm going to go pat everybody on the back for this one. I appreciate that, Bill. I, I would also, I, I know the rec is easy to spot, but uh, I got to include, you know, the fire captains and the people at the fire department too, because they've been much more involved in understanding what goes into the budget, how the budget works, being a part of putting it together than I think they ever were in the past. And they're much more cognizant of spending and how revenue works. So it, it really is a team effort. And I appreciate that you mentioned Luke and all of the rec team, uh, you know, the park guys, I think have a better understanding of what's going on. And it's just being very open and inclusive in, in how budgets are created, what goes into them, what we're planning on spending, what we have to spend. And uh, uh, it's just, it, it's a nice atmosphere. And I appreciate that everybody's more than willing to jump in and, and do their fair share in, in working on this. So thanks for the comments, Bill. They're, they're appreciated. Awesome. Thanks for that, Bill. Um, any other comments from the board or questions? All right. How about public? Sure. One second. Stephen. Uh, yeah, I, I will also say to uh, join Bill in 
uh, the sentiment that we're in a much better position than we have been for years. And uh, Eric has brought greater focus uh, to the financial health of the district than we've had in a long time. However, I'm going to uh, not go all the way um, because there are some other factors that need to be looked into. Our camps have been doing well, as they should. Um, we have the best camps uh, in Marin. Our uh, real estate tax taxes have come way up. Um, and then, there, of course, uh, then there's all kinds of grants that we have been recipients of. So these are good on the revenue side. Um, on the expense side, I'm not as thrilled with the way that we manage uh, our businesses. Um, uh, I think, you know, we, you contracted for the most expensive maintenance shed project in Marin County history. Just a few months ago, you approved, what, $400,000 for 90 feet of fences. Um, should cost you 200 bucks a, a foot and uh it's costing the district 3,000 bucks a foot there was only one bidder um in terms of business uh i don't think that that was uh, uh planning for business um you know we're, we're kind of fat and lazy in, in in this district we, you know life is good we've got good staff good revenue but um we we just need to take more advantage of our blessings and do a little bit more why aren't we fixing our fountains our picnic tables um this is a statement of values so i'm i'm not 100 on board however i do wish to uh give credit for our, our staff because they do in general do an excellent job so thank you thank you Stephen, for your comment all right so moving on to the district manager report uh, yeah, great. Uh, actually, a pretty good segue. Uh, and here is an update, uh, as was requested at the last meeting on the maintenance uh, facility courtyard constructions. Uh, you, you know, without reading this kind of word for word, uh, obviously, you know, the proposed bid for the construction of both courtyards, we've got a sole bid that did come in at a little over 460000 Working with the contractor, um, you know, kind of clarifying all of the scope of work aesthetics to it, uh, aspects to it as well as, uh, you know, value engineering opportunities, um, which actually led to a, uh, the notice of, of a potential deficiency in the drainage of the western courtyard, which was, you know, kind of a civil engineer design uh, and resulted in an enhanced drainage system. Even with that, we were able to get total cost on this project uh, to date down uh, by well over $26,000 from what was originally bid. So uh, I, I will have to say uh, Massa Construction and Ken Massa have been incredibly great to work with. They've been very open. They have thoughts. And when they do, they're very uh, uh, forthright in sharing them um, you know, just to make sure that, hey, we're aware these guys do a lot of these types of projects. You know, I got to clarify, again, we're not building a fence. This is in no way, shape or form simply putting up a fence. Uh, there's a lot that goes into this project between the grading, the engineering, there's retaining walls, there's drainage aspects, there is uh, cement foundations, there's roadways that come into there, there's surfacing, there's uh, the full nine yards. If we were building simply a fence, then it would be in my backyard. Um, it's not, this is part of a corporate maintenance facility. So that needs to really be kind of taken into context and understood and appreciated for exactly what the project is. Uh, with that said, uh, the project is moving along. We certainly anticipate still being able to have all of that work done uh, by the end of September, which has always been our timeline on this. Um, when a lot of most of the heavy work is done and the heavy equipment is able to get out, then staff will be able to you know, kind of focus on some more of the landscape aspects of it, some of the planning things that we're planning on putting in there. Um, and once we get through that, uh, we'll also turn our focus a little bit more towards the pedestrian pathway. Uh, understandably, the focus right now has been on these courtyards and working on these, and there's really nothing that can happen with the pathway until those foundation walls are put into place and the retaining walls on the north side are put into place uh, because there's just too much traffic going through there at this point in time to put in the pathway. Um, very brief update on the uh, Miller Creek uh, Trail. Uh, as we spoke last time, um, you know, we have an informal agreement uh, with the developer on a uh, cost share, looking at basically what it would cost to do that. I have spoken with legal. Uh, they're a little backed up. This isn't a super high priority, so I didn't want to push them on that uh, because that way when we do need to push them, they respond a lot better. Um, but they are drawing up a formal agreement for this um, uh, financial contribution uh, towards this. So I, I certainly wanted to mention that. As soon as I get it, review it, finalize it with legal, we'll send it off for review and execution with the developer. Um, and then just a couple other items to note. You know, uh, we talked about it earlier, but we have engaged um, our uh, financial year audit with RJ Ricciardi. Um, so that is already starting to get underway. And uh, we've also received and reviewed um, all of the updated tax rolls uh, for our special taxes and Special assessments, uh, park tax, fire tax, street lights, uh, as received from the county department of finance. So everything at this point in time has been submitted, and uh, we are done with that process for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, I did want to mention one other thing that's not in my report. It, uh, without getting into too much detail, obviously, uh, <clears throat> shortly, you know, once summer kind of concludes and looking at it, uh, and we can get this other massive capital project, we're going to really start turning our focus to the playground replacement project, uh, with you know an ideal goal of in a perfect world being able to complete that prior to next year's summer uh, camps and activities. Uh, although we don't have a final completion requirement deadline until December of 2023, uh, but I did want to acknowledge I brought this up a while back. Um, the Case family um, has long had a family foundation uh, known as Kelly's Wishes, and we had mentioned a while back that they were looking at um, dissolving that foundation and making a, a very generous contribution to the district uh, to be designated for use towards the playground replacement project. Um, they have done that. In fact, just earlier this week, um, received that contribution in a total of $11,500 um, from the Kelly's Wishes Foundation and obviously the Case family. Uh, it's incredibly generous. It's incredibly humbling. Um, Chris, obviously, this is a big part of you, your life and your family's life. And I just wanted to make sure that got its just due uh, because by the time this came into my hands, this report had already gone out and uh, it's just an incredibly thoughtful gesture to put towards this. Um, one of the things I will most likely be bringing to the board is that this will potentially uh, uh, springboard other people who might want to contribute to this project. Um, and one of the questions that had come up is, you know, if people can designate this funding. The simple answer to that is yes, but to make it formal, I think what I'm going to wind up doing is drawing up a resolution that the board will adopt that says, you know, we will accept contributions and, uh, and direct the district staff to track and monitor all contributions and ensure that all uh, contributions received are applied towards this project um, and just kind of makes it a little bit more official. Anybody who contributes, obviously, uh, we'll send them a personalized uh, thank you note um, that will also include our tax ID and uh, we'll, uh, you know, hand sign all of those and, and make sure that everybody who does contribute, uh, their contributions are recognized. So that resolution will probably come uh, in the next meeting or two, but primarily I just really wanted to uh, touch on the, uh, the Case family and everybody who's involved with the Kelly's Wishes Foundation on just making an incredibly thoughtful uh, contribution towards this project and, and thinking of the playground in this way. I know the playground has significance for their family as well. So, uh, Chris, and uh, please, with everybody involved in that foundation, um, our deepest uh, heartfelt thank you for that and make sure everybody understands how appreciative and how humbled we are to be thought of in such a way. Thanks, Eric. We're really happy to do it. And that money really represents the whole neighborhood. Our family name just happens to be on it. So thank you very much. Wonderful. Um, just again, wanted to say thank you to the Case Family and Valley Foundation, but 
I was wondering if we're going to be doing kind of what you're saying, if we want people to donate, you know, we'll give them a lot of appreciation. Is it possible, depending on what we decide on for the playground, to maybe have a spot with little plaques? Or, uh, or not plaques, or like, yeah. I'm not saying it's impossible, just that we haven't gotten to that level of detailed discussion yet. All right. Because I think it'd be kind of cool, because then we could, you know, advertise that also if we wanted to. Yeah, like, there's a big conversation yeah. process and figuring out how exactly to do it. Not impossible, but just a conversation we haven't gotten any great detail on yet. Okay. Um, um, I'll echo the thanks for the, the contribution. That's just incredible. Um, so, uh, you know, in, 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 in case you're very, very humble um, in, in sharing that this is a representative of the community, um, but I, I, very generous. So I'm very appreciated. So thank you. Can I have a different question? Um, can I ask about the trail update? It's kind of like a, the bigger picture. So I know that the legal is looking at that. Do we know if how the work is going on? I've seen all the dust and the clearing up that they've been doing on the road. So is there work? Do we know if their work is moving forward so that we could possibly start on this trail? Uh, I actually, and I might be mistaken, but I think you're talking about two different projects. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. The road is the housing development that yeah. has nothing to do with the senior living development. Right, and um, that's the I don't other. Know. I haven't gotten an update from the developer, but I would say at this point in time, given that they haven't broken ground and that the environmental uh, regulate, regulatory okay. agencies in the county have a you know pretty hard works update of October 15th uh, for work involving the creeks and waterways, it's very it's looking highly unlikely that they're going to have that bridge in place and start to work on the road uh, until next spring. Okay, I didn't know where the dust was coming from. If it was the bridge and like all that movement or if it was just the housing development it's that's why i was asking okay that was just like my general i have no idea i just see lots of dust questions yeah. okay thank you sorry can I, can I connect to someone's question really fast then eric for the the form that's being drawn up i think we had a short discussion about if if out of our control that project were to get pushed which looks like it will be you know it totally makes sense we were going to build inside you know i'm obviously not legal but we we're going to build in a closet set if you know based on expected inflation or something like that that would everybody we were asking them. i spoke to legal about that and asked that they included some language to that effect perfect thank you so much you're very welcome <laughs> it was a very good idea well, i don't know the developer like it very much but it was a good idea <laughs> Any other questions, comments from the board? All right, seeing none, uh, questions, comments from the public? Uh, yeah, one second, please. Stephen. Uh, yes. Uh I would also like to join others uh, in thanking uh, the Case family for their generous uh, donations, not only for uh, this project uh, that we have envisioned, but also things that they've supported uh, in years past. You know, having lost a, a brother myself, uh, I can't even imagine, you know, losing a, a child. Um, I just, I, 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 you know, I, my heart really goes out to the family because I, I, I know the, the pain of their loss. Um, but uh, in any event, because the Case family has been so uh, helpful for our community, I, I would love to see that we don't just do, uh, have a plaque, don't just have a plaque, but maybe some sort of uh, customized plaque or some sort of artwork, something unique and special to celebrate the joy of childhood as well as uh, uh, Kelly. Um, and I, I just think, and, and that takes a little bit of time. That's, that's not a last minute thing. And so maybe uh, maybe you guys can think of a way to move that particular aspect of, of the remembrance uh, forward. I, I don't know what kind of budgets we're looking at, but uh, I would think something that uh, is just maybe a step above just a, you know, thank you from the Case family um, uh, would be appropriate. And I would love to see, uh, you know, something of focus, community interest, uh, unique uh, to uh, Marinwood. Um, with regards to all these projects that we're doing, you know, one of the aspects that we hadn't anticipated when when Air came aboard is how many uh, capital projects we would be doing. And I got to say, you know, especially with this this maintenance project and some of these other things, I I, I find the expenses are like way 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 out of control. And I think we need a little bit more discipline in the uh, contracting and, uh, process as well as oversight. It just seems like we're on the receiving end of some very uh, unfavorable uh, deals for the taxpayers. Um, so maybe the board can discuss how you can achieve a little bit better um, performance for the taxpayers as far as these projects. So expenses don't go totally out of control. That's it. Thanks, Stephen. Okay, then moving on to item F, fire department matters. So I guess that would be you, Kathleen. <laughs> Jeff, um, hello. So we discussed, of course, the um, eucalyptus trees, and we were told again that it's not really a fire issue or a concern, not an issue, a concern from fire professionals. Um, and so now what we're kind of just doing is expressing to the fire commission to call the county and kind of put pressure on the county. So if you feel the need to, if you have a problem with them, please call the county so it doesn't come up again in another fire commission meeting. Um, and then the other thing that we discussed, which is on our um, agenda as well, is to uh, change the meetings, to amend the bylaws to bi-monthly meetings, and every commissioner was really in support of it. Um, knowing that if there's an incident or anything that they want to bring up that they can call a meeting or Eric can call a meeting or even the fire chief or, you know, we can all come together on an off meeting. So um, I think that's really it. Did I miss something, Eric? Should we provide the numbers so that if anybody on the board or some members of public who are here can call that number? I can, I can email it out. I don't have it okay. down immediately in front of me, but I can email it out. Yeah. You mean you have it memorized yet? No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's the county DPW Rose Division. Um, was that it? That was the main? Uh, from this meeting, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. And are you going to cover Chief's White Report? Uh, briefly. Perfect. Okay. That'll be item three. <laughs> um, all right. So, any any questions, comments about the draft minutes of the fire commission meeting? All right. Hearing none. Any from the public? Uh, yeah. One second, please. Stephen. So. Uh... I guess you know we'll get into this. The uh, fire commission or uh, parking rec commission didn't meet again this next month. And it, I'd like to point out that the purpose of public meetings is to inform the public, you know, or the public has an opportunity to find out what's actually happening in their community. And it's really, really hard when they don't meet on a regular basis and we don't get proper uh, 
uh, records of the meetings and there's no videotape. And I question why we even bother. Are we just giving these handful of people the authority to make decisions on behalf of the entire community and never question anything? It, it, it kind of, you know, I think maybe you guys need to take a look at both the fire uh, commission and the parking record commission and figure out how um, you can do this better. Um, uh, I'm sure there's a reason why people don't want it, the, these meetings recorded. I don't think it's a good reason. I think it's perhaps people don't want to be caught in saying something wrong or, or maybe uh, even worse, looking bad. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, it's, this is public business. So um, I, I'm disappointed that we're, we're cutting down access to the fire commission, but uh, be that what it's may, that's what you decide. Thank that's you. It. Thank you. May I make one comment? Um, I just want to make a correction in what Stephen said is that these commissions don't have the power to make decisions. They have the power to put forth an opinion and a recommendation to the board, but it is this board that makes the decisions from both commissions, not the actual commissioners. I just want to correct that. So thank you. Thank you, Director Kilkenny, for the clarification. Um, so that actually leads us quite nicely into item two, uh, potential amendment to the fire commission bylaws, adjusting regular meeting schedule from monthly to bi-monthly. Do I hear a motion? I motion to move these meetings to bi-monthly. I'll second. Go ahead, Chris. I'll second that. Can I, uh, can I ask for a little bit of a clarification on that? Because these are your for formal bylaws okay. the commission uh, and I, the report, yeah, basically to adopt the amendment um, right. as presented. I make the motion to amend the bylaws to meet for the fire commission to meet on the even months of a calendar year bi monthly with as the huh? as presented. As presented. As presented. Just, just read number two. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Chris, it's all you. Just kidding. So, okay. did you actually read number two? Well, I presented it as presented. All right, as presented, I will second that. Thank you. So, sorry, I just, uh, there's language in here. So what you're doing is you're obviously approving what the language does, but ultimately you're approving the language because this is how the bylaws will be amended. Correct, in Article A and B. Mm -hmm. All right, very good, thank you. Um, any questions or comments from the board? All right. I'm sorry, I just have one quick one. Um, what would be the channel through which um, either uh, a commissioner or a, a director or a staff member would officially ask for an extra meeting? Uh, well, it's funny you would say that, Chris, because that's actually written in here is uh, under Part B for special meetings. Um, and, it, and it talks about how special meetings can be called, uh, maybe called by the chairperson, by three members of the commission, or by the board. Uh, and then it just talks about public notice and everything else. So, so obviously, if something were to come up, say a board member has something like, hey, this has come up. I know you all meet again for another two months. Can we get a meeting in between that? You'd probably uh, be best served sending that to me. I would share that with the chairperson, and the chairperson can call a meeting. We uh, would, uh, since now we'll have open Tuesdays uh, on the first Tuesday of every month, that would be the preferred date. Otherwise, it's just a matter of coordinating schedules on my part with all of the commissioners to see who's available and make sure we can ensure a quorum for a given date and time. Perfect. Just wanted to have that clarified out loud. Great. Thank you. Yeah, pretty simple. All right. Anything from the public? I see a hand up. Yeah, one second, please. Oh, the hand just went down. Oh, all right. I think from the public. Then. Um, oh, now it's back up. This is like a, I, think he, I think he takes it down when you bring him into the chat. One second. Let's just see what he's got. One second. Steven. Thank you, Eric, for, for catching that. Uh, no yeah. Um, well, <laughs> You know, it's so frustrating. Uh, Kathleen, you and I actually agree on a lot of things, but uh, unfortunately, the way that the dialogue goes in these meetings, you make your comments, which, you know, leave half the conversation out. I don't have a chance to respond, so I am going to respond right now. Um, I do understand that the, the Fire Commission is an advisory commission as well as a Park and Rec Commission. My main point, however, which you did not address, and I hope I'm actually directing this to the entire board, is how do you make the um, process of decision making public? Uh, it's it's not hard. I mean, you just re hit record and it's done. This is what county does. This is what all kinds of communities do. And I, I, uh, you resist this, and it does not uh, 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 does not give us confidence that uh, we're getting stuff done uh, in the most effective and efficient man uh, manner. Um, so I would hope that you would take the obligation as public re representatives to be public and um, insist that uh, recordings get made and we we have some sort of accountability because right now there's 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 none and i, I know that uh in all earnestness that you do try to represent uh what happens at these meetings but it's not a substitute for an actual record it's always going to be an interpretation of what happened so um that was my comment so thank you thank you Stephen. all right that said can we have a vote please board president Ruggieri. aye director case aye director kilkenny aye director oiserman aye and director shed aye thank you Thank you. Motion passes. Um, item number three, Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. Uh, yeah, I can cover this uh, very briefly here. Uh, I, I do want to say uh, Chief White certainly apologized that he wasn't able to be here tonight. He is uh, currently away out of town on a personal matter. Um, he actually informed me uh, quite a while back that he would be away on this meeting. Uh, as far as his report goes, if there's any questions about anything specific in here, I can do my best to either answer them or pass them on to Chief White. Uh, the one thing I did want to point out because it's actually um, uh, something that you know we're all I'm certainly excited about. Um, there was a lot of work that was recently now finally completed up on Queenstone Fire Road that helped to uh, clear some of the vegetation growing into the road, make it a more passable um, fire road for apparatus and other fire structures. All of this work was actually funded through the core funding of the Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority. This didn't come out of our individualized buckets. Um, yet Sanderfell did all of the work in, in coordinating the crews, identifying exactly where it needs to go. Um, I did take one um, trip up there as we kind of looked at everything and, and marked off the spots. Uh, they helped us with a couple trees that were precarious, that had fallen, that were uh, you know really close to the side of the road and made it a little tricky to get around. This was a lot of work that happened up there um, with little impact to the environment. Um, and they you know kind of led on the environmental study, on the uh, on the crew, on everything that got done. So if you're ever in the mood for a very uh, steep hike, I would suggest walking out Queenstone because the, the condition of the road right now is, is just phenomenal. And when you um, 
compound that with all the work we did in the lower lying areas of that open space um, abutting up next to all of the residences. Um, that area is vastly improved, um, not only for access, but just for the prevention efforts. So, um, you know, a large thank you to them uh, for all of that work. Um, otherwise, you know, within the chief report, you can kind of see what's happening here. Again, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them the best I can, um, and we can just kind of take it from there. Thanks, Eric. Um, any comments or questions from the board? I just wanted to echo what you said. I happened to, I think I got Queenstown on Saturday with a bunch of people, and we were all commenting on it's the best that trail has looked in, in, in memory. And we hiked up there quite a bit, so it was great to see. Good. Thank you. Appreciate the feedback. Anything from the public? Sure. One second. Stephen. Yeah. So um, Chief White's not here tonight, so I'm going to take advantage of the uh, of this to to bring up the fact that. Uh, the Chief White is uh, basically someone we're renting uh, from uh, uh, San Rafael, and we have an agreement with the city of San Rafael. We're paying them as opposed to the, for many, many years, they paying us. And I do think we should not necessarily accept our current situation as the most optimal um, configuration for firefighting uh, that we could have. In other words, uh, should a full merger take place? Should we contract out with Cal Fire? I think that always has to, to be looked at and considered. Um, I don't know how much the citizens of uh, Marin would pay for fire service versus the city of San Rafael. I suspect we pay a lot more per, per household. Um, and, you know, maybe for the long term prospects, we should have a different uh, arrangement than we currently have. So that's all I have to say. Okay. All right. Thank you for your comments, Stephen. Um, all right. With that, we can move to park and recreation matters. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and everyone. Hello. I'm just going to touch on a few things on my report. Um, the, the big uh, thing to update everyone on is just we're in our last week of our summer camp program this week. And um, things have um, it's been, it's been a challenging summer, but things have gone ultimately very well. Um, the main challenge has, has been, as most people probably assume, has been with um, just the constant uh, dealing with COVID absences uh, all the time. Um, many, many staff out each week and, and different campers out each week. Uh, made things a little chaotic more than we were expecting. Uh, but uh, I'm really, really pleased with how everyone was able to rally and we were able to um, you know, uh, move things around and keep, keep everything going um, in spite of some of those uh, groups getting shaken up a little bit in terms of who, who's working each day. Um, ultimately, we, we uh, were able to offer a pretty standard summer camp program um, this summer in spite of all of those challenges. And I threw some numbers on here. I'm not going to read all of it out, but um, I'll just kind of see what we're doing each year. And um, I'll pull some of these out for just, just for your interest. But um, we ran uh, nine weeks of summer camp. Uh, this summer, we, we ran 13 different age groups in our day camp program, and then another uh, 10 to 12 specialty camps, like half-day uh, enrichment programs, with, like art camps, Lego sports camps, and things that um, kids could do in conjunction with our day camps or just by, by themselves. Um, and we served... Um, almost 950 unique children uh, this summer um, between ages of three years to um, kids entering seventh grade. Uh, another 100 CITs, middle school age kids that worked in our program, and then um, employed around 150 uh, staff members in our camp program, high school and college age kids, mostly from the neighborhood and, and nearby areas. Um, so I just put out there just to kind of characterize kind of what, our, what our program is, is how, what kinds of people, how many people we're really dealing with. And um, the, the feedback's been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, the, the parents have been really appreciative to see things go back to normal, see us add in field trips and special events, and just be accommodating a larger number of, a larger number of kids in each group. So I'm really pleased that we were able to do that. It definitely took a little more work than, than we were expecting uh, going into it, but um, I'm really pleased with how, how it's gone. And we're um, just plowing through these last few days, and uh, the, the staff morale is, is um, uh, it's actually really high and, and everyone's just really pleased with how the summer's gone. So that's great news. I'm happy with that. And um, we'll update everyone as we crunch all the numbers and we'll have some reports coming up on um, the next few months showing kind of how we did financially with all that. But um, we, we were pretty much full in, in most of our camps for the entirety of the summer. So that, that was really great. Uh, we also just have as like a bonus. We, uh, Stephen said this already. I don't know if he was referencing this, but um, Marin Magazine voted us uh, best summer day camp in Marin and Bay Area um, this year. So we heard that um, last week. And uh, they're doing a little reception this week. We're going to try to make it up to that. So I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. We're going to make it to that. Um, full season is shutting along. We've got a couple more weeks of uh, of the summer season, and then we transition to our fall schedule, and we'll be open until October 7th, which is somehow when, when we normally shut down for the off season. Um, and our missing weeks of the pool schedule, most of that has, has gone really well. We've had really good attendance at all of our programs. It hasn't been way too crowded. We haven't gotten complaints about uh, overcrowding the last one lanes or um, anything like that. So I think um, the schedule has, has worked well, and our, our changes that we've made have um, done well. We'll reevaluate all that as we, as we do our, our post summer how wow to kind of see how everything went. But um, uh, I, I added a couple numbers in here. Just we offered 400 uh, or two months of 400 unique swimmers um, this year, and um, had about 60 uh, guards in training, and then um, we. Uh, kind of put this on there, but we employed around um, 60 staff members for the pool this year. And so um, that's been really well, and I'm looking forward to a strong fall season. Um, and I'll continue to update you guys on, on how that goes. The staff is transitioning right now uh, into working on our fall schedule. We've been working on it for a while, but um, I'm really pleased to uh, be able to return to some of our adult programming that was on hold during the last two years of, um, of COVID. And so we're excited to get things back. We'll be offering our photography program. Um, we'll hopefully we're working on getting a, a language arts class. We'll have um, some Pilates and fitness classes, our tennis program, and some art classes, and some other things going on for adults. And then for the youth, we'll, we'll have uh, some Lego classes, dance, taekwondo, sports, art, and then we'll be offering our preschool and after school programs again, as well as some camps during school breaks. So um, a, a big uh, return to normal for our fall program. This fall that we're excited about, we'll be announcing the details as we um, have this all finalized. Uh, so that's, that's what's going on in the recreation department. Um, once summer ends, we all get together. We have a big, a big cleanup, a big um, kind of debrief session with our staff before they head back to college. And uh, we, we start making plans for next year just while everything's fresh in our heads. And so um, that'll be coming up in the next week or two. We're excited about that. Uh, on the park maintenance side of things, the staff continue to spend time out at Creekside Park. Um, it's a park that uh, we haven't spent a lot of time um, at while we, while we didn't have a full staff, but we took advantage of um, now having a full staff to, to get out there during the summer um, to, to really improve things. Uh, that park is on fresh water, so we're making a big effort to um, reduce the amount of watering we have to do out there and go into a much more drought tolerant planting situation. So uh, we took out the turf. I think we've, um, we're going to be putting in just some like, drought-tolerant plants and, uh, and simplifying some of the foliage. Um, we've improved some drainage, had to add a drain and some um, a retaining wall to kind of improve things uh, from uh, running into the tennis courts and water draining onto the tennis courts. Um, and we're trying to reduce the weed, the overall aesthetic. So the guys are working really hard out there. I hope you guys have a chance. I mean, uh, it's getting better each day, but um, I'll let you know 
one things are, are pretty much done, which will be in the coming couple weeks, and hopefully we make a trip out there to see uh, the, the work they've been doing. It looks really nice. One last time, they'll be, they'll be coming back to the main park to rehabilitate the turf. Um, we make, make some repairs uh, in the fireman's picnic area. We've got some fences to, to repair and replace, and uh, some drinking fountains to fix and replace, and uh, a long list of things to um, get to that are hard to do when we have all the kids uh, running through the park all day. So we'll be hopping on that as soon as um, this camp's over. And um, I wanted to uh, just mention that uh, two of our staff, Esteban and, C and our newest Seven Receiver, just completed their certified pool operator certification uh, class uh, a couple weeks ago. And so um, we have two more uh, CPOs on staff, which is really helpful for running the pool and keeping everything uh, managed down there. And um, I believe our uh, Mark will be also updating his. He's had that and he has to renew um, a little later this season. So um, it's nice to have a few more certified pool operators to, to help out with the pool maintenance. And I'm really proud of them for getting that done and, and completing that successfully. Um, and I think that's um, all I want to touch on in my report. But please let me know if you guys have any questions or want to know about anything specific. I have one request, yes. um, and it's just to touch base since the kids are starting school. If and it's to my understanding that it is not maintained by our maintenance contract or the landscape maintenance contract is the walkways from the panhandle all the way. What is the last? No, not Peach Stone. Opal Stone is the last one. Um, and if yeah, the guys is just the guys can just go out and kind of clear them out and just make sure that it's safe for all the kids to be able to use that and not have many blind spots along the way. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Kathleen. We um, yeah, we can definitely get out there uh, this next week and just see if there's anything that needs to be cleaned up. Or uh, I know there's a, there's a pretty big bush in the um on Miller Creek Road uh, in that crosswalk area that, that definitely is obstructing view, which we should make plans to take out uh, or at least chop off. So um, we'll, we'll make a note for us to get out there and take a look at that. I think that's a good idea. Perfect. Thank you. And the bridge. Um, do we are we still maintaining those big bushes right by when we walk across the bridge by the tennis courts to the school? Like, do we need to mount anything over there? You mean the ones that Chris hits his legs on when he rides his bike to work? Uh, you mean, with, with, Especially about the kids, but we could help Chris too. <laughs> well, um, which one specifically talking about ones that are growing through? Like, I think she was talking about the oleander on the back tennis courts, but unless I'm mistaken, it's pretty under control right now. Oh, yeah, those are those are all. Those are all like, weeks. Yeah. Okay. Because sometimes, you know, how they get and they, and then you have to go around and yeah. I have to go to work tomorrow. I'll double check. Okay. Right, yeah, let me know. Let me know, Chris. Yeah. Um, hey, I just wanted to say, Luke, and this obviously goes out to you, you and your entire staff. Um, that uh, you guys do an amazing job keeping the kids of this neighborhood, uh, and I know other neighborhoods, but you know, since we we deal with this neighborhood primarily, um, you're keeping them healthy, you're keeping them happy, you're keeping them connected to uh, their community. Um, you know, where our house sits, we get a prime time view of what's going on at the camps, and, and it's just amazing. Um, you know, having lived in this neighborhood for a lot of years, that those camps didn't exist. Um, to see what you guys have done to incrementally grow those into, you know, uh, now a countywide recognized program um, of excellence is, is fantastic. Um, and unless I'm mistaken, um, you had uh, the U.S. Surgeon General at the pool the other day. So if he didn't make any, if if he didn't, you know, give you guys any hassle, then the pool's in good shape as well. Okay, so you need to explain that because I didn't know about that. Yeah, uh, thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. Um, I'm not gonna say anything. I just, I, yeah, he may have his kids in our swim lesson program this week. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Seriously? Awesome. That's yeah. a side note. I'll, I'll say my, my kids have absolutely loved the, the summer program and, and you know, I also appreciate all of the, all, just, just just everything that you all have done this, this summer and throughout the year, Luke, um, you and your team. I, I also saw the work that you guys are doing in the Creekside Park. Um, it's quite an undertaking and I'm really excited to see the results. Um, so I appreciate that for sure. Um, thanks, Lisa. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, there is a few things in the creek that I noticed, um, like socks and various things, and I don't know when we're gonna go through there again. Did you not um, pick them up while you were down there? They were a little far for me. Like they're in the creek. I would have had to wade through the creek and I decided yep. that I didn't want to wade through the creek. Um, do but you have a specific location? Yeah, we do go out there and we try to remove, you know, so it's, you know, the cool tree that everybody climbs on. And then right underneath there, there's like that deep spot. Oh, that tree. So you come down, you come down. the other tree. Oh my God. Come down and you turn, like from the playground, from the playground, you come down, you turn left and there's a tree right there on the side. See, Luke knows what I'm talking about. And it's got all the cool branches that the kids can hang out over the creek. So right there, after the first little waterfall, it's kind of deep. And my arms are kind of short and tiny, so I can't reach so far. Had I had a big net, I would have grabbed. But there's a few things here and there, and um, I'm sure some moms really upset that they're kicking home without socks. But I just want to make sure good. before the rains come through that we pick up whatever things the boys decided to leave behind. So uh, yeah, we, ask, I'm, I'm sure girl. we also I may have seen the kid taking off the socks. Okay, socks in the creek. Got it. So no, no but there's, like, there's <laughs> right. a few other things there too. Yeah. We we, understand, we we do check periodically. It's helpful to know. So, yeah, like that. So we'll check it out. Um, but also, yeah, before the rainy season, uh, we do do an annual um, in-depth creek walk where we check for uh, dam how hazards and, and other issues that we need to address. Uh, and then before the winter, now just looking at erosion concerns that we can address when, when months come that are conducive to that kind okay. of stuff. So we'll check it out before that. But um, yeah, we do we do check it periodically. Okay, I just want to make sure. And then um, to highlight, don't forget, August 19th is the last. Hurrah of summer music. Oh, uh, thank you for saying that. I don't mind uh, to just, yeah, um, music in the park and, and see the festivals. I wanted to say this. I didn't see my note there. Um, but uh, yeah, so, we, so music in the park uh, has gone really well. We've had three installments so far, plus our summer brew fest, and all those events have been really well attended and uh, gone really smoothly. And, and we're really just, just so excited to have our, our summer events back up and running after that two year break. Um, and our last music in the park will be a week from Friday, uh, so next Friday from six to eight. And um, uh, there's a uh, the music we have planned is, is this like pedal steel summit. Uh, we're gonna have a bunch of which is I don't know, you don't know what that is a pedal steel guitar. You probably go to the slide. Um, it's got a really cool, unique sound. We have a bunch of um, really really uh, expert uh, players coming and doing a bunch of songs that you know with a backing band. It should be a lot of fun. So that'll be on uh, August 19th. Um, as far as uh, the music series, we, we do have Bill Hansel booking bands for us again this year. That is done purely on a volunteer basis. Um, and I really appreciate his help in finding some cool uh, musical groups to come and, and you know play the park. Um, and I think he, he gets people for, for a fair price for what it is. And um, it's really nice to kind of get the variety and some different genres and some local and non-local acts. So um, it's a good mix. And, uh, and again, that's something he's wanting to do because he enjoys it um, from from just you know out of the uh, completely for free. We're not paying him to do that. So. Um, just wanted to answer that from an earlier comment uh, earlier in the night. So uh,
I, I've been swimming there, uh, not as much in, as I have in years past. I actually think that the, the cleanliness of the pool is very, it goes up and down. And I, I'm glad that we have more techs watching things. But I, when I see clumps of hair uh, while I'm doing laps, it kind of grosses me out. And I, anyhow, I, I, I'm not, I think it's a challenge because the pool is so well loved, but um, I think we could maybe try to do a better job with the cleanliness of the pool. Um, with regards to programming, this is in general. Uh, we've talked in months past, uh, th think in terms of user groups, and I actually heard you use that term last month. Uh, I've been talking to different user groups. I'm wondering if you do have a user group advisory board, uh, for example, young moms and, and, and young kids and, and uh, elders and full adult, you know, adults and stuff, uh, lap swimmers, uh, rec swimmers uh, advising you. So you, you know, when you make the changes that you do, you're actually listening to what the customers want. I just think it's a good idea. We, I was taken aback by this year's change in the pool schedule. It worked out okay, but uh, I'm normally one of those swimmers that likes to swim at noon, but I, and I have to adjust, but overall, I'm, I'm happy. With regards to uh, parks and building maintenance, um, I think, you know, the way that your reporting is kind of vague. Um, you, you gave us a little bit more detail, uh, you know, in your, your verbal report, but I would like to see um, uh, real spec specified projects that you're working on each month and specified projects that you complete each month. That way we know things are moving forward. I just really kind of hate having to constantly remind uh, you about, say, uh, fountains need, needing to be fixed and uh, uh, graffiti that needs to be fixed and the, the park benches that need to be re refreshed and the, the, you know, things like that. It's, I, I see a lack of discipline in the uh, the work uh, uh, reporting for the parks and building maintenance. I know everyone works hard. I know you work hard um, at Luke, um, and I think you do a fantastic job in the, the uh, parks, or I mean, in the, the camps, and I'd like to see that same level of excellence uh, in the management of our um, parks uh, effort, uh, parks and maintenance effort. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Stephen. Right, uh, item H, board, member items of interest and request for future agenda items. Do you have any? I don't have I, I don't have necessarily an agenda item, but I did see somebody as a part attendee where names log on. Um, is there any way, Eric, to like reach out to find out who they are and then change their name to who they are instead of just like a username? So then if it's somebody we know or somebody whatever, then we can reach out to them if we need to. You're muted. There's actually a very distinct set of laws that state that uh, people don't need to give their names and, and you're not to uh, require people to give their names when they attend public meeting or make comments. Can we ask that? I mean, can we say something like maybe it's not you're still muted? Um, Maybe they don't know how to change it. It's maybe a different request too. Like if you want to share, share. Uh, it I can talk about it. I mean, I know who that person was, and I know they don't want to change it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I mean, I, I, it'd be nice for more people to attend for sure. sure. But, I mean, I was excited to see you today. So thank I, you. Th I think the question was more of like, you want to know who the person was. You could reach out to them later on and see if they they were happy with the meeting and if they had any extra questions that you could. I think like, that's I mean, meant, right. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see someone new. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited when Stephen you partake too. But I'm just saying when other people partake, it's like, oh, it's not just us playing Hollywood Squares. So it was nice. <laughs> so thanks, Eric. No problem. Can I be in the middle? You yeah, like changes throughout the time. Oh. Absolutely. I think you should be, though. That would be a great place for you. <laughs> Especially since you always raise your hand. It's and then you get kicked to, well, on mine, you get kicked to the top left. So just keep your hand raised and you'll be top left. <laughs> All right. So um, any any other items of interest agenda items from the board? Just a review from the summer that you guys are going to give us and then um, an update on whether we can get the um, accounting audit done sooner, like if they're available to do that sooner, like you requested. Yeah, there's, sure. uh, we're, we'll work towards it. You know, yeah. it's not only on their end, it's on our end too. And you know, okay. keeping in mind that there's two of us that I know, I know. everything else. So. I didn't know if it was like, like a, that they are busy doing something else or all, well, they just, are, it was our team. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we're, we're going to try to get it done as early as we can. Um, but we'll just, we'll see how it goes. Okay, sorry. That's no problem. Um, oh, I did have a question. Um, could, I mean, by the time we already get there, I was just wondering if we're doing after school programs again this year. Um, and how have we done the analysis and whether that's uh, viable for us to continue doing with the cost that it is for us versus the amount of kids that are utilizing it? Go ahead, Luke. I mean, I'm happy to talk about that next next month. But yeah, yeah. we're just short answer. We are operating after school okay. program again this year, um, similar to, to what we we're doing uh, in years past. But um, I can give you more. more yeah, let's let's do that for the next meeting, and then like kind of give us a breakdown of like when we'll what is the breaking point at which we decide to look at offering a different version of that, like this, the specialty camp kind of thing that we had talked about at one point instead of doing after here. Okay. Thanks. Any um any from the public? Yeah, one second. Stephen. Yeah. So two things. Uh, first of all, we did not have the parking rec commission uh, this past month. We had nothing was said about it. So um, I guess for the future, I would like to know um, why this is so if your uh, meetings are on schedule, and I'm wondering why we're not having meetings, we don't get notification. Um, and to a second point, um, there was an issue this month, uh, where someone in my neighborhood, uh, erected a sign in our park, you know, 15 feet into our park, um, uh, asking that people stay away from their fence. Um, I dealt, I, I spoke with the neighbor, but uh, anyhow, I emailed both uh, Eric and Luke, twice, once asking him about this in a second with a picture of it. And I never received any kind of response, not even a courtesy, we we're gonna to get to it. I would like to know in the future, I would like to see on the agenda, what is the professional expectation that you have of our staff in addressing such issues? To me, it's very clear when we have encroachments onto our um, uh, land that they get addressed immediately. But um, that didn't happen in this case. And uh, I would just love to hear uh, in the future that we are gonna take uh, such intrusions seriously and that the staff, uh, uh, has a professional obligation to uh, positively engage with the public of matters like this. That's all. Thank you, Stephen. 
for some reason um, the camera stopped working, but I'm still here. Right. Uh, and I'll address on the PNR meeting, you know, even though it's a personal matter and really is not the public's business, but my entire family got hit really hard with COVID and was out and it happened uh, right before that uh, meeting during the planning process. So I, uh, in consultation with them, decided not to do it. I apologize. I didn't get the thing up. I was busy taking care of my family. Can I make a correction though? I don't think you decided, Eric. I think that the whole commission also agreed not to have a meeting as well and to support you in the situation that you were in. Yeah, correct. Okay. So. And our health always comes first. So. Right. And Eric, I appreciate you sharing that if you didn't need to, but um, I appreciate that as it had been brought up a couple of times. I'm glad that your family is feeling better. Thank you. Um, I think we are set to adjourn. Motion, Motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. <laughs> okay. Which one of you is in the second that? Because you kind of said it at the same time. I'll second. I'll, I'll be second to Bill. It's fine. Oh, please. No, no, no. I'll follow behind you. No, 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 no. I insist. <laughs> no. Age before you have four-way tie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, then I guess that means we uh, are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you all. Good night.